Our next wise guy is Gregory Crosby. Gregory, Gregory's poems have appeared in numerous places in print, online, and of course, in bronze. He lives and teaches creative writing in New York City. Please give a rousing hometown welcome for Gregory. could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> Thank you. Please, please do not applaud between the poems. Every time you applaud between poems at a poetry reading, a New York hipster gets a pain right here. Does everybody have a cocktail? Too bad. <laughs> this first poem is entitled Drinking Song. Every part is a cosmological constant, an equation to make the theory come out right, a tremor of votive light behind a bottle of absolute at a bar too dark for anything but texts sent and texts received. It's so loud you can't hear yourself drink. You press end and the world disappears. When the screen goes dark, there's only the mirror. Every glance births another self. There's any number along the top shelf. This could go from bad to worse, said the scalpel to the sponge, the doctor to the nurse. You nurse a beer, but not back to health. Dead soldiers rub shoulders, spreading the wealth of glass, glass against glass, clinking. This is where boredom does its thinking. And you, your pure thought, and thought less. The funny thing is, you're never drunk. You're the pigeon on the subway stair, the only being that understands the sky and the underworld are one. Anything can happen, so nothing ever does. Torment is for suckers, and bliss just the veil the dancer never drops. It was a party until someone called the cops. No one ever calls the cops. Have another. Have an other if you must. That dark bottle is thick with dust. Paul holds it up to his face and looks at you and says with a wink, this one's on the house. <laughs> the hipster just keeled over somewhere in Bushwick. <laughs> this is entitled, The Naming of Evil. At first, we thought along traditional lines, Amanda, Cody, Jennifer, Aiden, then giggling, Eustace, Hortense, Claude. Someone suggested Al, which we found banal, as was Satan, Lucifer, and Ball. Someone else rattled off a few corporations, a few killers, a president or two. There was a long pause that widened into a void. You smiled and gestured toward the silent hall, the closed window. Someone said their own name, followed by Junior, by the third. Someone cackled like the shadow, and we all cried, that's it, why not? He should know. Then someone drew a figure, an eight, upon its side, with one long, swift, inky slash through its twist on the last scrap of paper we possessed. We were angry. We were saving that, someone else hissed. Yes, said the artist. For this. By now, we were late for the christening and the bris. 
but nobody moved. Outside, the snow did what snow does. Uh, apparently last month it was the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. It was also the 50th anniversary of the death of Jim. This is what results. <laughs> this is entitled and starring Lee Harvey Oswald as the 13th Doctor. <laughs> it's always the 50th anniversary of something. I'm trying not to turn every poem into a selfie, for every selfie is not a poem except to the beloved. I've been attempting this ever since they were self-portraits. It gets harder with every passing century to know just where to hang the mirror so that when you look at it without your left eye, you won't see the hole in your head, the wall behind. Someone says, and by someone I usually mean Baudelaire, tilt your head instead, anywhere, anywhere, out of sight, out of mind. The bionic eye never blinks. That sound it makes like metal grinding against mental is all you need to understand the nature of thought. Guess what? It's a time war. There's a joke about trying to say exterminate, but only saying eggs. Like every joke, a cigar is not just a cigar. In the school book depository, the knowledge piles up, outdated even as it's printed, waiting to be purged of that lie that is evolution. Someone, not Baudelaire, but maybe, opens a window. I like the 21st century, but I'm not what you could call a fan. Once again, I've made this about me, a sonic screwdriver made from vodka and orange juice and ink. I'm trying to think of what all the holes in our heads mean. I'm trying to regenerate. JFK was bigger on the inside than the outside, it seems. I click the shutter, a unified conspiracy theory with a hole where its eyes should be. I rest the barrel against the sill. I see the hole and the wall behind. There's a circuit loose. The sentry is stuck inside a police box, dark blue, and making that sound. JFK regenerates as the war doctor, and the long arc of napalm bends towards something else. Physician, harm thyself. Take a selfie every day until your eye grows back. Happy anniversary. What was it we were celebrating? What were we mourning? I'm only 46, but I've had half a century to think about it. The nature of thought, I mean. Time. War, an eye I dare not dream, a hole in my head that brings the far away so close, close enough to project any future you like, close enough to recognize, memorialize, and finally forget. What do I look like today, I wonder? Click, exterminate, click, exterminate, eggs. <laughs> You can, you can snap, that's okay. Only, only Brian Weiss can snap, though. Uh, Jeff read a wonderful poem about Tomorrowland, the wonderful future. This is a depressing science fiction poem. It's called, Now or, you know, Whenever, Voyager. Here's the ultimate dystopia, death. The ultimate utopia as well. Flip a coin, an audio guide to hell, or an Instagram of your own last breath. The future is just a painting on glass, or is that the past? Look, a flying car. Skyscrapers like bottles behind a car. Will green screen the world falling on its ass? Science fiction, the truth that tells a lie, the supernova of a dying rose, stick a needle in my CGI and cross my heart with a line of code. Our perfection at long last is at hand, the final frontier and the ship unmanned. Uh, this next poem is called Stillhaven. Stillhaven, of course, is the Dutch word for still life, but you all knew that. Stillhaven. A painting is a permanent present tense, an app that does one thing and one thing lonely. Scroll down. There's the gallery floor glowing. There's the guard glowering at your emphatic thumb. Eyes were once yellow, now they're all red. Everything moves forward, especially the past. Pay it forward, Renaissance. Come, enlighten us. Early modern, it corrects, trailing its fancy hat in the dust. It's like that episode of Scooby-Doo where the gang unmasks the ghost of Hamlet's father 
to reveal fortune bras. And it would have worked too, if not for you meddling kids. <laughs> oh, where's the dial, the remote? Early modern limps and shucks and jives for a tuppence dropped in its Tupperware cup. In the next gallery is some art made out of ones and zeros. Cool. We ask that you please not photograph the aura, for I have but the power to live without the power to be born. James Joyce could have told the difference between all this and porn. It's what you admire without needing to possess. It's the immortality of death. A life that had stood in corners, a smartphone charged. You're standing too close. Is this the original frame? Ciao, Joyce. The guard begins to raise his voice. Oh, look, a still life. Still even, even still. A still born, a still birthing even. Heavens to Murgatroyd, exit, stage right. There's a reproduction in the gift shop crying for its mama. What is it to you or to you that it should shed such tears? Distracted early modern shed some years. Why don't you even take a picture? It will last never. Memory full. Are you sure you want to delete? Are you sure you want to delete? Nothing stirs a second life. Though we may long, it must longer. A painting is the permanent vocative. Oh, 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 dies. The rest is. Here's a weird poem about white privilege. <laughs> I'm the beneficiary of white privilege. Thank you. This is called White Elephant, Not to be Confused with Elephant in the Room. Each arrival is leaving the scene of an accident. He isn't sure if he should gain his 15 minutes of fame by shooting up a school or leaking secret documents. You can tell a great deal, his grandfather said, by the way a man wears out his welcome and by the cut of his shame. He holds his face in place with a smile like a whalebone stay, self-effacing without self-erasing, a pencil point, soft and tensile, racing toward the break at the end of a name, a good name, a coupling of two shafts, a universal joint, allowing for the maximum freedom of movement, all directions, especially up. The game is up. The game is up, 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 up for so long it feels like down, like fall. Each apotheosis is nemesis, dude swears to bro. No one ever goes broke underestimating this claim. One of the twins is Joe Blow, the other is Jim Crow. He likes to listen to extraordinary renditions of the same old song, the self-same old story, the same old song and dance, my friends. He's been researching extradition. If his grandfather only knew, he'd roll over in his grave. That's him on the right, the gentleman just outside the frame. He made a fortune convincing masters that they were slaves. Wherever you go, there you are, like a word redacted. He stares at the world. It gutters like a very old flame to whom he slowly convinces himself he's still attracted. Each enunciation is weaker, older than the last. Behold a man. On these old speakers, it sounds tinny, lame. His privilege? To hear the explosion long before the blast. So my brilliant girlfriend sent me a challenge. She said, I want you to write a poem that involves Ryan Gosling, a horse race, and werewolves, and make it rhyme. I am a full service boyfriend. And so I wrote this poem. The poem is entitled, Hey Girl, Again, remember, Ryan Gosling, werewolves, horse race, rhymes. Hey girl, you know I only kill the thing I love. You know it's not the tabloids, the buzz. You know it's just the woman above, her pale face that never tans because it goes straight to burn. She's so full-figured, a big, beautiful once was. Like a paparazzi feeling the pull, I can't help myself. Lock this door after I'm bound in your virgin wool, and no matter what you hear, ignore. Watch the race. 
and cheer the gray to the finish to take from the drawer the silver your mother put away until the moment you were wed. If your horse wins, what will she pay? I'll just howl here in your bed until the night you're finally sure I'm made out of words a gypsy said. Pure of heart, a curse uncured, a splendid, blonde, beautiful beast. To open the door would be premature. Keep it barred against the priest. Don't return my agent's call. One of us, I'm sure, is going to feast. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, entitled The Oohs and Ahs of Death. Down in the garden, living with intent, two sisters cuddle beneath a blanket of screens, their laps topped with dreams. One giggles while the other texts. They are unaware, they are anywhere. Moonlight dapples them, but spell check does not recognize dapples. The browser opens slowly, a flower in real time, and then the drugs take full effect. Language languishing, languorous. Between mind and tongue, it's neck and neck. Outside, the police knock twice. Outside, the police knock twice. We do the police in one voice. Suddenly, a pirate ship appears, courtesy of Verizon. The moon, she has the most coverage of any network. The sisters call Marco YOLO all night. Marco YOLO. Marco. YOLO, giggles. A hundred thousand followers bloom, but we only follow a few of them in return. Down in the garden, it seems, documentation is more than equal to experience. Your battery is low, sweet and low, like some sort of chariot coming forth to carry you home, alone, once more, with feeling. Meanwhile, Poisson paints and paints and paints desperate to keep up with the demands of a Google image search. A mouse clicks nibbling at the canvas. The sisters flee into the desert. Well, you only live twice, once for your selfie and once for your tweet. I too am here, there, even in Arcadia, even now, especially now, ever, only now. Uh, this is called No Man Did This To Me. No Man Did This To Me. Anyone get that reference? It's the illusion hour. No man did this to me. Anyone, anyone, call it out. No man, what's that, what's that? Thank you. Every time I look at the title though, I think Norman did this to me. And I think, I wrote a poem about Norman? Oh no wait, there's no R, it's No Man. No man did this to me. There's the gun that you put in your mouth because it tastes like licorice, and there's the gun you put in your mouth because it's a gun. In the kingdom of the blind, the cyclops reads only the headlines. Depth perception is overrated, he opines. I perceive I am to suffer, comes the reply. That's a line from Thomas Hardy, you know. I love his clean-cut, crime-solving boys. They always find that hope of which you were unaware, buried in a chest, inside a secret compartment, behind grandfather's clock, his polished pendulum beating out the time. All our punishments are obscure. In high school, I knew the band Poison was far worse than the cure. <laughs> Everything else is fuzzy since then. I understand the pain, but not the dimming of the day. I no longer have a father who can make waves, a storm to comfort me. They call it a man cave, but there's just a boy down here in the dark, listening to books on tape, practicing braille the way a hand tries to trace tattoos on the inner thigh of the past. No man sounds like nomad. I say it the way the robot did on Star Trek, defiant and desperate as a collapsed tin shack. I chew on the gun and spit out bullets. In the dark, I hear how they ricochet. I bet they have the spark you're looking for. Two more. You went okay? All right. Has anyone's mind wandered off to their IRA or <laughs> wondering what their yield is? Bunch? What, poetry? Oh, yeah, poetry. It's a soft opening. Oh, right. Soft opening, poetry. Right. Yeah. 
you need any <laughs> uh, Here's a sonnet. It's the next to last. It's called Teaching to the Test. Any educators in the audience tonight? <laughs> what are you doing here? You should be home grading. Teaching to the test. <laughs> it's called Teaching to the Test. Someone's American Revolution homework, black poster board pasted with founders and facts, curved around the rim of the trash can where the student jammed it, relieved of the assignment, the burden of knowing something you mean to forget. The shot heard round the world echoes daily, and that's why we're all so deaf. Tomorrow, there's another test. Everyone solving for X, never asking why, or else asking solely on a need-to-know basis. Y never knows what it needs to know until it's too late. X knows, but cannot tell. We pass destiny and take the F in fate. Uh, last poem. It's called Omega Man. <laughs> and I want to take a moment. The first Three Wise Guys performance was in 1995, in the previous century. And it was at the Enigma Garden, Enigma Garden Cafe. And back in those dim days, uh, before BuzzFeed, God, drones, we used to sit around and say, uh, you know what? Downtown could really be something. There's a lot of potential. All we have to do is, is make it happen. And so it's very nice to come full circle with you lovely people tonight and with my dear friends and uh, look around and see just how far downtown has come in 20 years or so. So if you're still here contributing to downtown, which you must be because otherwise how do you even know this place existed? Good job. <laughs> Omega, man. You've had your last word long ago when you were young. Nothing will be definitive again. Only the latest thing, endlessly until the end. Only the same exits, existing in a shaft of sun, a reed in the wind, thinking this again? Only the delusions of a rising wave. From one glance, there is a mirror that never forgets. You need never look at it again to know who you are. Thanks for listening.